Butters, the men's game will come up next. The Rollins men, not only on a three-game losing streak, but it sounds like uh, Sam Philpot is out, and we don't know how long that will be. He is the leading scorer for the Rollins Stars, has had a terrific senior season, but the Tars went from 10-3 and three to 10-6 and six from the top of the league. They are now down in third and in danger of falling out of that home game that everyone wants for the first opening round of the Sunshine State Conference Tournament, which is just a couple of weeks off. And uh, we hope that the Tars can get back to their winning ways, and we hope that Sam Philpott's injury is not something that will last for a lengthy period of time, but uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, the Rollins Stars will play at 4 o'clock, the men's game, or half an hour after this one, whichever is later. As we uh, are ready right now from the Alphonse Sports Center in Winter Park, we are going to have our national anthem. By the way, a lot of people have asked about uh, WPRK over the past several weeks where we're normally over the air on 91.5 FM. The antenna was blown down by Hurricane Irma, and uh, we've had no word they were supposed to hook up with someone else uh, to broadcast uh, 91.5, but apparently that has not been done yet and not anticipating it to be done before we end the season. We're sorry for those of you who like to listen to us over the air. Introducing the visitors from... West Palm Beach, they are a newly official in this conference of Palm Beach Atlantic Sailfish. Hannah Grimm, a 5A senior from Apple Valley, Minnesota, averaging 20 points and uh, nearly seven boards. She's number nine in the conference in rebounding. It. Also starting will be Anya Galigbo, Nikiro Anya Galigbo, a six-foot senior from Miami, transferred in from Boston University, averaging 12 points and nine boards. Mina Salia, six points a game out of Toronto. She is a 5'8 junior. And getting a start, a bit unusual, Jessica Nodell, a 5'10 freshman. She is a hometown girl out of West Palm Beach, Florida. And also in the starting lineup, a local girl, uh, Ciara Cumbie, 5'11 sophomore, went to Wekaiva High School on the northeast side of Orlando, Florida. Averaging seven points and 7.6 boards. That's number seven in the league. And she uh, had just four points against the Rollins Stars, but had 11 and 10 rebounds against Barry. For the Tars, J. Lynn Harrison, a 5'4 sophomore, averaging eight and a half points a game, had 11 down in Palm Beach. Jasmine Stone, seen her average drop down near six points per game, had only five against Palm Beach Atlantic in the first one. Julia Engler, all-time leading three-point bomber for the Rollins Stars. The 5'9 senior from Harmony, Florida, had 16 all in the second half in Palm Beach, averages about 13 and a half. Bernicia Andrews, seven and a half points a game. She is a 5'10 junior out of Lake Mary, Florida. And Carly McClendon, boy, she's got to wake up and play hard here and also stay out of foul trouble with Anya Galigbo. Carly is a 6'1 junior out of Sanford, Florida, had six points and 15 rebounds in Palm Beach. How do you translate the effort and the hustle that you had in the second half versus Florida Southern into a full 40 minutes versus Palm Beach Atlanta? That's really the key that I'm going to be looking for, Robert. And what we alluded to in the open, who's going to be the number two scorer 
behind Julia English. She's been getting hers, averaging almost 15 points a game in the last eight contests. The problem is she's had to have that cold star behind her. And when you're facing a leading scorer in the conference in Hannah Grimm, who went off for you on 31 the last time you played them, you need that support to help you out. Wearing the very dark blue with uh, ooh, kind of silverish numerals, silver trim. Palm Beach Atlantic will go right to left. We are across from the scorer's table at midcourt. Tars in the white blue numerals, blue and gold trim. The uh, veteran Jose Rodriguez with Jalise Oliver and Melanie Rozier. The tip is tipped and controlled by, let's see, it should be Palm Beach Atlantic. But uh, Engler did not have control, so the possession arrow should go and does go to Rollins. First possession belongs to Palm Beach across from Coach uh, Carlos Palacio in his sixth year at the helm. He is a PBA graduate. Coach Wilkes uh, in his 32nd year, once again, looking for victory number 697 as McClendon steals. Coming up court, two on three, Engler. Now we'll work it out to the side, top of the key. Harrison, long three is going to be off the rim. And a rebound battle for and taken by the Sailfish. As you said, Harrison did have a very nice offensive game attacking. Anya Galibo working on McClendon down low, bodying up. And now we'll take it at the elbow. Oh, nice feed inside. And a foul as uh, Stone very late on that cut from Salhia. And Salhia missed the layup, but she was fouled on the play. Kind of going back to what worked for them in that second half versus Rollins when him got off. When you're going with the back door for us with Anna Galibo right on that right, out on the right block, kind of setting things up in motion. Mina is a 69% shooter out of Toronto, Canada. All the uh, sailfish are back up court here. Nobody on the foul line to rebound as uh, Salia hits one of two. First point of the game belongs to Palm Beach Atlantic. Here comes the Orlando Colonial product transferred from Georgia State. Engler, three, off the mark. Rebound tip nicely by Andrews, and the Tars will get another possession. Andrews almost threw that one into the back court. Here's Stone. She's open. She fires. She misses. And a rebound on the floor and will be off Andrews. Tars had an open look again. Engler and Stone. And they have missed uh, all three of their shots so far. But you like the fact, Robert, that they're getting those looks early in the shot clock and not having to wait until the shot clock is winding down and trying to get in, getting a contested shot and selling for a tough shot at it. Oh, Anya Galigbo just avoided walking. Three-pointer by Cumbie comes up short. And here come the Tars, left to right in the white. Harrison hands to Andrews and gets it back. Now we'll go into the paint. Andrews, ball fake, and gets in trouble. Has a tendency to dribble toward the paint and uh, not really be sure what she wants to do. So now got to get her hair fixed and does. Minute 45 in, one to nothing, Palm Beach Atlantic. Oh, man. Oh, man. Here's the grim wide open around the uh, screen. Nobody within 10 feet of her, but she misses the three. Not a great three-point shooter, 28%. And Harrison will lose it again. Tars dribbling inside with no idea what they want to do. Cumbie goes the other way and lays it in. Coach Wilkes wants a timeout. Palm Beach Atlantic has lost all 10 of their uh, away games. And uh, they are just 4-17 and 17 on the year, but they hold an eight-point win over Rollins. 25 meetings previously, 23 to 2 Rollins, but uh, those two wins have come in the last five outings for Palm Beach Atlantic. And Robert, right now, one thing I'm liking for Palm Beach Atlantic, you have Cumbie being guarded by V. Andrews. So that's going to give an opportunity for Hannah Grimm to work on a much smaller defender, be it Jalen Harrison or Julia yeah, Andrews. Ben Harrison, yeah. So they're going to take advantage of that particular matchup, knowing that Her knowing that Andrews is going to focus on Cumbie, who, to her credit, is playing much more outside and forcing Andrews to not provide that help. So Grimm gets that one-on-one -on -one matchup with Harrison. And they are uh, not fronting Anya Galigbo, and she's trying to back into the lane to force the issue on uh, Carly McClendon. Uh, at the very least, maybe uh, force her to pick up a foul or two here because there is really no backup at the five position for Carly. Tiana Rosser across the way, out for the year after a broken leg in the third game. 
And also, uh, the, um, the uh, uh, senior, uh, Kimana Edwards, who uh, really has not played much at all and is not even dressed today. Whitney Dunlop in the house, a women's official, doing a little busman's holiday here. Little pressure outside now as uh, we're going to have a, a foul over the back on Cumbie. Uh, I was thinking she might have traveled, Andrews. Well, the fact that Cumbie was backing her up forced the possible travel by Andrews, which was not called. Foul was called prior and superseded the travel. They're trying to double team here. Now they get it to the open shooter. And Engler will miss the shot. Oh, boy. McClendon kind of half-heartedly goes for it, and here goes Grimm. Misses. Rebound to Anya Galigbo. Travel. Travel with the ball. Good job by good job by Carla McClendon closing out on Anna Galibo, who got that offensive rebound and forced that travel. Here comes Rollins. Slowly across midcourt. Now here's the double team by Palm Beach Atlantic. And Harrison will drive into the corner. Gets it to, oh boy, Carly McClendon on the elbow. Was wide open and didn't shoot it. Stone will and hit the three. So what Palm Beach Atlantic is doing, Robert, is they're going a 2-1-2, kind of a 2-1-2 half-court trap to try and get the ball out of Jalen Harrison's hands. The Tars have to utilize that, get the ball out quickly, and find an open shooter like they did with Stone for the three. Anna Grimm almost always goes to her right, and here's Anya Galigbo backing in on McClendon. McClendon tips it away, but right to Mina Salhia. Oh, that pass was almost tipped away. Backing in is Cumby. She fires and misses. Rebound to Andrews. Good defense, Vernicia. Quickly up court is Engler. Grimm now will get back on her. And uh, the much taller defender, Nodell, on Harrison. And Harrison will go around Nodell. McClendon at the elbow. Yeah, broke open. They didn't see her on the pick and roll. Here's Stone, another three. Jasmine, that's long. And now McClendon. Got to shoot it, Carly. Somebody's got to shoot it. They do. They fire it up. Oh, my goodness. Bernicia Andrews. Smart move. Brilliant move. And hit a 15-footer. McClendon just not looking at the basket at all. That time the shot clock was going down. Rollins now with the last five. Take a five to three lead. Here's Cumby, local product. Anya Galigbo with McClendon on her. Will drive on Carly. Travel again. Yeah. Carly uh, played her right hand. That's where she's going to go. As Bistro and uh, Double D, Denise Daniels in. Stone and then. Andrews out for the Tars. And that with Daniels coming in, you're going to put Daniels now on Cumbie and force Cumbie to try and play more inside. She was playing outside with Andrews guarding her. So we see how Coach Blasio adjusts to Daniels coming in. This throw will dribble to the baseline and give it to Engler. That three is going to be off the mark. We can see that one. And that ball tipped on inbounds. No, Denise Daniels, good effort. Yep, try to save it. Couldn't get it to stay. Nodell out. And uh, Jane Spielberg from Tallinn, Estonia, by way of Broward College, checks in. Four and a half points per game. Jane's 5-11. And the Tars with a 5-3 lead. Oh, nice tip by Mc... Ooh. Nice tip, but she used that right, used that left arm to get, left right arm to get some uh, separation and push the Ana Galibo over the back. So that's First foul on McClendon. Something the Tars have to absolutely avoid. One uh, basket uh, in this game for Palm Beach Atlantic and one free throw. They've got three. The Tars have got five. Rollins two for eight. Palm Beach Atlantic one for five. Here's Anna Grimm. Kicks it top of the key to Salhia. Oh, nice move on the baseline. Blocked from behind. Just stepped out of bounds. Yeah. Nine to shoot. I don't know if McClendon got that. Yeah, don't say McClendon did not get get full possession. I don't know if she had the block or not. It looked like her or Daniels down there. Now to inbound the ball, Anya Galigbo. Took a couple steps. Grimm will fire it. Where was Bistro? Dana Grimm hits the three. Coach Wilkes just shaking his head over there. And uh, losing it out of bounds is Engler. That these girl of Palm Beach really start feeling good about themselves. Just, uh, there goes Grimm. Now we'll kick it off. 
Oh, he has uh, Anya Galigbo. Lays it in. And McClendon, you saw her back off a little bit. Didn't want to pick up that second foul. I'm just not sure why she's not fronting her. You know, the height difference is not such that they're going to lob it in. Eight to five now. So five unanswered for Palm Beach Atlantic. Distro backs up and uh, throws up an air ball. Wow. Out of the game go Harrison and Engler and uh, Rachel Jablonski, the 5'10 freshman from Orlando, will check in along with uh, Yari Martinez Toro, 5'7 freshman from Bayamon, Puerto Rico. She will now pick up Grimm. Four minutes remaining. <laughs> this throw. Tars have played woman to woman as Anya Galigbo will turn and throw up a jumper that bounces off. Here's Jablonski, Rachel. In the corner, Diari Martinez Toro. Her three is good. Nice feed, Jablonski. Martinez Toro knocks it down, ties the game. Grimm pounds the dribble. Tars have played woman to woman the entire game. Carlos Palacio in his sixth year, trying to isolate Grimm a little bit. And there she goes. She is uh, really good at drawing a foul. She gets in trouble, she'll throw her shoulder into you. One of the tops in the league at uh, shooting free throws, a number of free throws, only 68% though. It's, this is that one. Out of Apple Valley, went to Marquette in Milwaukee. By the way, Apple Valley on the south side of the Twin Cities. Last I looked this morning, it was 10 degrees. Uh. So we're about 70 degrees warmer up here. I'm sure she's happy to be here. Martinez Toro will throw it away. Let's throw it right into uh, a well-covered McClendon. Into the ball game, by the way, D Darson DeShazer. And you play behind Anya Galibo, and she's going to get that pass and lay it in. That's been the case. Palmer, Barry, uh, you know, all the... Uh, the bigger girls will get in that lane, and uh, if you don't front them, uh, they're going to get an easy entry pass. And it's now 11 to 8 in favor of Palm Beach Atlantic. Not very pretty so far. And really, huh? the thing that's frustrating for Coach Glenn Wilkes is the fact that, one, they haven't been able to front on Galib and Galiba, as you mentioned. And number two, they continue to let Hannah Grimm drive inside the web however she wants to. And Everybody on Rollins is focusing on Grimm when she drives, so that's how she's been able to kick it out to the open shooters that have been able to take those shots as of right now, but the ability to have that option open and available to the Sailfish is going to serve them very well. Now full court pressure as uh, Martinez Toro being hounded by Grimm. Into the ballgame, Chandler Hall, the sophomore out of Buford, Georgia. She's got it, and she will throw it into the scorer's table. Tars are having trouble handling the pressure. They went from the back, they went from a full court press and went back into that half court 2-1-2 two, two trap. And the Tars have not been able to find an answer for it. That's their fifth turnover in this first quarter. Hall dribbled the baseline and was wide open and then tried to throw it out to the far wing and threw it about four feet over the head of her teammate. Salhia's jumper from the uh, left side is good. She's got three averages, six. And it's 13-8, uh, to eight. Grimm all over Martinez Toro. Anna Grimm getting a little bump here and there. Here's Jablonski. Jablonski now will have it tipped away. Here comes Salhia on Bistro. Kicks it back to Spielberg. She'll step behind the line, miss the shot. Oh, Anya Galigbo with the offensive board all day long. Six points for her, and Chandler Hall will get a uh, moving pick. 15 to eight, Palm Beach Atlantic. And Glenn Wilkes is either had to take a quick break or he's so frustrated the way his team's playing, he doesn't want to see it anymore. What uh, Victor's saying is he's not on the bench over there. Yes. <laughs> and he was not tossed. Uh, no. Okay, very there interesting. There he comes. Back into the gymnasium. 
15 to eight, Palm Beach Atlantic. Playing much harder and much smarter than the Tars. Out on the point. Now they throw it down low, kick it to the corner. Grimm had an open look, didn't shoot it. Seven to shoot. Anya Galigbo at the foul line will miss badly. Jalen Harrison back in the game along with Martinez Toro. 80 seconds left. Rollins in nine minutes with eight points. Here's uh, Andrews, holds that ball out with her right hand. And Chandler Hall will spin in traffic, kick it over to Toro. Martinez Toro backing up, misses a three. Rollins out three of 11. Carlos Palacio wants him to slow it down. Hannah Grimm will run the show. They can easily get two for one. That ball stolen by Harrison as Anya Galigbo then gets a little hack on Harrison and gets away with it. There's Jalen Harrison driving, missing, getting fouled though. That's the one thing the Taurus have to do. They have to try and get steals and not let Palm Beach Atlantic set back up defensively into that trap in the half court. Harrison will shoot the first free throws of the game for Rollins. That foul whistled on DeShazer. 67 percenter, knocks it down. Come be back in. Salhia out, Daniel Galigbo out. For Palm Beach Atlantic. Left hander, got the right foot behind the left, and hits them both. First two points for Jalen Harrison. 44 seconds left, here goes Hannah Grimm. Oh, that little high dribble. Doesn't want it to shoot, do it left hand. She's trying to get two for one. That's a smart move. Shot it with 38. Now the Tars can run it down. There's about a seven second difference. Shot clock, eight clock. Rollins sometimes does not look at the clock. And I'm not sure they're looking at it here. Here's Chandler Hall. An illegal screen on England. So now an easy 21.6 seconds left. Um, and they did not pull it out and hold it. So now they're gonna have to pay the penalty. Palm Beach Atlantic. That's a fifth foul on Rollins, but player control. Now Grimm can bring it up with plenty of time. Let's see what they do. They're gonna uh, spread. They're gonna spread yeah. it out and let Grimm go one-on-one. On one. Needs help. Somebody's gonna have to get over here to help. She's gonna drive. She's gonna drive, and they do help. She's gonna throw up a prayer. Chandler Hall coming over. Here's Engler. Engler will get to midcourt. Oh, she got fouled. Whoa. I think she's going to shoot three. Yep. At the shot, as, a, oh. as the clock went out. Oh, man. Graham Jose tried. Rodriguez right there as Engler was trying to throw up a prayer. Was it Hannah Grimm? Yeah, that was on Grimm. So, so Engler is going to get three three throws to close the first quarter. And the thing is, Engler had plenty of time. She threw it up late. Grimm just has to throw her hands up late. And she doesn't get the foul. Instead, she tried to get the shot block. Ingrid just threw it up with the right hand off balance. Graham yeah, they're gonna out. They're going to put three tenths back on. So that means there will be players on the line. If it had been at the buzzer. Yeah, everyone would have had to clear out. Right. And it was on Hannah Grimm. That was her first. And uh, for a senior, wow. Whew. You just said it exactly right. She was just throwing up about a 28-footer on the run. Grimm was right there, but she stuck her hands in. And uh, Engler has hit two of them. And you're dealing with someone, Robert, who's shooting for her career over 85 for 80 percent from the free throw line. 80. And you can a, cut it so to a two-point game. No. This is that one. Smart move by Coach Palacio. He brought in a player, buzzed that clock, and kind of took Engler out of her rhythm a little bit. But uh, Jose Rodriguez was right there on that call. And not a smart play by a smart player. Well, considering the almost 30 seconds, almost 30 seconds ago of game time, she threw up that quick shot on the left, on the left wing to set up a possible two for one for Palm Beach Atlantic. And she cancels that out with a foul on Engler to end the first quarter. Yeah, it was 15 to eight, so uh, the Tars did score the last four points of the quarter. We are at the end of one quarter of action here in Winter Park, Florida. Palm Beach Atlantic 15, rounds 12. Rollins College Department of Athletics would like to recognize its contributing partners. Geico, Career Source in Central Florida, 
Afro Team Sports, Coca-Cola, Jewett Orthopedic Clinic, Seminole Chiropractic Medicine, Yoga Land, Hilton Orlando and Altamont Springs, Spectrum Sports Performance, Waterboy Sports, Super Dot Productions, and Jim O Photography. Thank you for all of your support of Rollins Athletics. As Victor Anderson will be uh, having a Seminole Chiropractic Medicine post-game show where we'll pick the Yogurtland player of the game. First possession, second quarter belongs to Rollins. Right in front of us, Vernicia Andrews in the white, blue numerals, blue and gold trim. We'll throw it in to Jalen Harrison. Got those shorts uh, pulled up like she usually likes to do. And the sailfish in the dark blue with silver numerals and trim. There's a, uh, to tie the game, Jasmine Stone, no, gets her own rebound though. Gives it back to Engler, two pointer, and knocks it down. Just inside the line, good feed by Stone. Hagler now with four quick ones, has cut the Palm Beach lead to 15-14. The Darson DeShazer, the uh, senior out of Decatur, Georgia, did not play in the first game between these two. Cumby, Grimm, and Anya Galibo both on the bench for Palm Beach Atlantic. They've got eight to shoot, Spielberg. Nice drive, cannot get it to go, and Cumby will get hammered. Yeah, that's on second on Julia Engler, who was right there. She just tries to box out and not trying to try and clear the not trying to try and clear out with the arm. She won't pick up that foul. He said picks up that second. She's gonna have to sit, it looks like. Cumby. Family in the house here. We'll hit the first. Third point for Ciara. Averages seven and a half and a seven and a half board. Here comes Rachel Aaliyah, the freshman out of Williamsburg, Virginia, to replace. Engler, who had just gotten the lid off the bucket, and that ball is on the floor. Leah almost did not hustle to get that rebound, but it uh, Andrews does. End of the ball game for uh, Palm Beach Atlantic will be Tyler Davis, who rarely plays, but she is in there. Here's Andrews. Andrews, tough shot in the lane. Ties the ball game. Second bucket for the junior. Bernicia Andrews. Cars have not played zone. A little bit surprising to me. And now again without Grimm and Anya Galibo. That ball tipped by McClendon. And uh, Spielberg will throw it out high. Cumbie is going to drive. Now kicks it off. And the long two-pointer will not go. Nice block out by Andrews. Here comes Jasmine Stone. Now throws it over to Harrison. She'll back it up. Tough shot. That goes in and out, but Andrews will put up the rebound. Stick back by Andrews. Everyone was worried about everyone was worried about closing out on the perimeter. Andrews came flying in uncontested in the lane to get that easy put back. Tars with their first lead of the afternoon, second lead of the afternoon. That ball was thrown at the feet of uh, the Shazer, but comes away. And here is Sayara Cumbie. Nice defense, Andrews. She got the rebound. That will feed it out ahead to Harrison. Harrison is bumped in traffic. Open his stone. Ball fake. Now kicks it to McClendon. Her turnaround is good. Nice feed. Jasmine Stone. First bucket for Carly McClendon. Timeout. PBA. And Coach Palacio not real happy the way his team has been playing. And they finally getting McClendon some touches down low. And they've been always probably a little bit too fast the last couple of possessions. McClendon was open to try and get some looks. And they've not finally find her. Top on the floor for Palm Beach Atlantic. Taurus Curley in the midst on a 12 she to 1-1. One one. Carly McClendon has not scored double digits in the last 10 games. The last seven averages 4.8. She's just not looking at the basket. She's got a great left-handed jump shot from inside 15, and they need more from her. And really, Robert, kind of goes back to what we saw for Carly early in the season with her, miss her missing those shots point blank range. And, Sometimes that gets into your head as a shooter, as you alluded to many times. Andrews, by the way, was six points, three for three from the floor, seven rebounds of the 14. Rollins a plus three rebounding. Palm Beach Atlantic, 32% from the floor, one of four beyond the arc, three of six in the line. Rollins, 41%, but just two of 11 beyond the arc, and they have hit four of their five free throws. Rollins, though, has turned the ball over already eight times. That's not something they've really done a lot this year. And really, and most of that is because of Palm Beach Atlanta going to that half-court trap. I thought the ball, Tars bring the ball across the timeline. And Rollins has to do a much better job of protecting the basketball, number one, and number two, figuring out a way to handle that, handle that trap. 
Tarzell will uh, do a little pressure. <laughs> Coach Wilkes kind of changed his mind after they hit the floor. They all ran up to put pressure on after the inbounds pass. Ball was kicked, though. And Anya Galigbo is back, but Grimm is not. That ball's tipped, and Harrison will steal it. We'll get it over to Stone, who hits the layup. Nice play by Harrison. Nice finish by Jasmine, and that ball is going to be tipped. Another steal by Harrison. Now she slows it down. Car's up by six now. They have scored, uh, let's see, 14 of the last 15 points in this one. Andrews to a cutting Rachel Leah. Leah. Too far under the basket. Got much of a double team by Anna, by Anna Galibo as well. Anna Galibo there on the defense and a nice job by Paul Michelinic. They'll send Grimm back into the game. Uh, she will be picked up by Harrison on the woman to woman. Goes right, does Hannah Grimm. Stops and pops in and out. You can keep her at the three point line, you're ahead of the game. Another rebound by Vernicia Andrews, and here's Leah. Got to hold that ball a little higher. She picks it up, and will give it to Vernicia Andrews, who kicks it over to, to Stone. Turn around, McClendon, off the mark. Nice rebound by Leah. Oh, my, what a stick back by the freshman. I'll tell you what, Rachel Leah, her and Jablonski have been getting themselves some good minutes the last few games, and if you get baskets like that and effort and energy, you're going to see your minutes increase as they'll need them down the home stretch. Absolutely. Boy, Anya Galibo posting up, and that shot is off the mark, but on the floor, and we're going to have a jump ball. That'll stay with Palm Beach Atlantic. Good effort uh, in there. Look like Nodell. As Grimm is going to come back out, as is Nodell. Into the ball game will be Caroline Patrick, the sophomore from Tennessee. And what she does, yeah, that ball tipped by Harrison again, but picked up by Palm Beach Atlantic. Hey, Fresh clock. Hey, little Robert Rollins going into his 1 2 2 zone. Haven't seen him use zone this much today. Caroline Patrick, by the way, only shoots threes. 90 plus percent of her shots are threes. And here is the ball in the corner. The jumper on the run, no good. Anya Galigbo is McClendon, sort of flat footed. And now gets a block, and she will throw it up again, miss it again. And Leah will battle for that rebound, save it. Nice play, Rachel Leah. And here comes Denise Daniel, five on four. Harrison backs it up, keeps the dribble going, and now will set it up. She, got some, she has a variable matchup one-on-one -on -one with Silver. Yeah, exactly. And uh, she will draw that foul. Nice call, Victor. She, saw, she has thought a much slower, much less athletic Solberg on her. Saw Leah set a screen, asked her to clear out. Let me break her down off the bounce. She does so. She'll go to the line to shoot a pair. Harrison, 67% on the year. Hit her two earlier. That's only the first foul of the quarter on PBA. There's Harrison nails it. The end of the ball game will be Summer Conte will replace Harrison if she makes this one. Summer wants her to. Lane violation with McClendon, so the, field for, so the free throw won't count. Wow, that's too bad. It went in. McClendon in the lane, now pressure in backcourt. That ball tipped by Denise Daniels. Gets it over. Oh, man. Stone cannot hold the pass. Coach Wilkes knew he had an easy basket. He knew he had an easy basket off the steal for the trap. And Jasmine couldn't just ha couldn't hang on to it. Now again, pressure in backcourt. Rollins with a nine-point lead, 25 to 16. Inbound pass. And uh, bringing the ball up court is Tyler Davis, a junior out of Cypress, Texas. Now between the circles, we tick down to the five minute mark. PBA running a weave outside. Now they switch, and uh, Anya Galigbo is guarded by the much smaller player. Here's the shot, two pointer, no good. Rebound Jasmine Stone off the miss by DeShazer. Here comes Jasmine. The senior gives to Rachel Lee. I thought about three. Now we'll go to her left. Gives it off to Jasmine Stone. Oh boy. Try to get McClendon, but Anna Galibo got that right hand on it. Knock it out of bounds. 
Pass was a little behind McClendon as Denise Daniels will come in. She will probably have to guard Anya Galibo. Bistro also wants to check in, but it's too late to get there. Got to hurry. Now they get it off. Oh, Stone cannot hold it. That's the second pass. He's fumbled out of bounds here. And, Robert, remember, Rollins already used two timeouts in the first quarter, so Leah couldn't afford to burn another one when she had that trouble getting the ball inbounded. Bistro will check in. Leah out. Wasn't getting much help on that inbound. Summer Conte, the freshman, into the ball game. Summer hasn't played in a few games. And she is out of Louisville, Kentucky. Anya Galibo posting up, but uh, Denise Daniels trying to front her. And uh, Anya Galibo got that foot in the lane, and that ball tip. Beautiful front job by Denise Daniels, and away she comes. Can she do something with it? No, misses the shot. This throw has a tip, but uh, will belong to Palm Beach Atlantic. Great steal by Daniels, but couldn't finish with contact. And uh, Stone out, Jablonski in. 25-16 is our score here in the second quarter. Here comes Salhia back in the lineup. Mina Salhia, the junior from Toronto. Spielberg picks up a dribble. Has it tipped? Turn around, Vernicia. She did not in the layup. Oh, my goodness. Anya <laughs> Galigbo saw the tip. Ball was bouncing loose. And that's the first bucket of the quarter for Palm Beach Atlantic. They cut the Rollins lead to seven. Distro. Works to Daniels. Long two-pointer. Off the mark. Here comes Salhia. Got a brace on that left knee. Behind her back, Conti will pick her up. Working a weave. That ball tipped out of bounds, and it will be Rollins' ball. Nice effort, Joe Bistro. He had Silverberg in the corner, and pass got a little too hot for the registered Junior Davis. Turnover number eight for Palm Beach Atlantic. And I feel Palm Beach Atlantic is trying to save Hannah Graham for that the second half. I don't know why. The, the, the thing is, I know he was angry about that foul on the three-pointers. Daniels is dribbling into traffic here. It is almost seems like she's being punished for Yeah, that. exactly. And really, Robert, that's kind of been the turning point in this game ever since the Engler got the free throws, the Tars have taken off. Conte now gives it off to Andrews. Andrews backs it up, left-handed three, and Summer Conte knocks it down. Top of the key. And uh, the freshman gives Rollins their biggest lead, 10. Tom Beach is led by as many as seven, a back door, and Jablonski will draw the foul as she got beat on that little back door move. Probably a good foul at that point as Anya Galigbo is huffing and puffing coming up court. And you notice, Robert, that Rollins is starting to pick, picking up the pace a lot more. Subbing players fresh in and out every 90 seconds, two minutes, and the Selfish only dressing nine. Having trouble figuring that out, especially with Hannah Grimm, I feel, still on the bench, kind of, I don't want to say being punished after that foul to end the first quarter, but it seems like she has been punished, so to speak. Interestingly enough, Caroline Patrick driving is Denise Daniels on Anya Galibo and traveled oh. with it. She skidded for some reason. Uh, she just stopped and skidded. By the way, for Caroline Patrick, who missed both of them, those are her first two of the year. 2.30 remaining, first half, Anya Galigbo. Tars have really got to make some more hay with Grimm on the bench. Anya Galigbo now is uh, being fronted and will throw the ball out high after getting the, uh, the bounce and that ball on the ground and laid up and in as the Tars lost Ciara Cumbie. Eight-point Rollins lead. Conti now over to Bistro. That's a tough shot. He's backing up for three, and Jablonski oh, almost got that rebound. And up comes Palm Beach Atlantic. Cumby carrying that ball out high. Gets her hand all the way underneath that basketball. He gives it off to Sevilleberg. Her shot is off the mark. Anya Galibo. She's all alone under there. Doesn't anybody want to block her off? And lays it in. 
She's got 10, averages 12, she'll shoot a free throw. She's the reason She's the reason the Selfish are still in this game in spite of Hannah Graham being on the bench with the one for six performance. Her toughness, her energy, and her keeping the ball alive after every possession. That's how Palm Beach Atlantic has stayed in this game in this first half. And she's breathing very heavily. She's totally gassed here. Her free throw is up and uh, off the mark. And Bernicia Andrews will snatch down her ninth rebound. 95 seconds left as Andrews will give it off to Bistro. Engler is on the bench with those two fouls as Jablonski fumbled it. Andrews will come away with it. Now the Tar is not looking very solid on offense. They go around the screen. Bistro will take it all away and score. Got a nice pick at the elbow. And Bistro will give Rollins back an eight-point lead with 70 seconds remaining in the half. Pound in that dribble between the circles. Nina Salhia picked up by Jalen Harrison, who's checked back in. Now has it on the right wing. Patrick, who shoots the three, and a tip by Bistro. Here comes Joe Bistro. She's got three on one. Blocking foul. She had two players to her left and decided to take it up, and she will shoot two. Fortunate. I thought she was going to lay it off. Well, that's what I thought. And the risk of having a three on one and you take it yourself, that same situation, an official is calling an offensive foul. Exactly. That's what I thought they were whistling there. Bistro's free throw is good. She did have the three on one. She was on the right wing, and her two teammates were center and left, but both of them were wide open. And then let's see if she can hit them both. She's a good free throw shooter. All year long, she's been knocking them down 88%. Now they can get to two for one, but they're going to throw it away. And now Rollins can get two for one. Pressure on the inbound pass. Ours lead by 10. And similar to how Rollins struggled with the half-court trap for Palm Beach Atlantic in his first quarter, Palm Beach Atlantic has had trouble adjusting to the Tars full-court pressure in the second quarter. And well, again, Coach we are Palacio still... Palacio was thinking about sending somebody in. Now Bistro... The Shazer. Oh, Got to need some help to get that ball inbound, and they do. <laughs> Nobody was out there. Here's McClendon back in the game. And we're going to get a foul. Jablonski was held by Patrick, I believe. Yep. That's only the third, that's going to be only the third foul for Palm Beach Atlantic in this quarter. Rollins with three as well. Garson DeShazer will come back in. Patrick out. They try to set her up for those threes. She's only 21%, but she shoots a ton of them. Now the Tars, if they can get a shot off in six or seven seconds, will get two for one. Now they're holding the ball at the top of the key. And Andrews right open a little bit for a second on the left block. McClendon just uh, tossed it to Jablonski. Now they might as well hold it. They got 14 to shoot, 28 on the quarter. Harrison backs it up, fires. In and out, no good. McClendon tried to get the rebound, and away comes Palm Beach Atlantic. Garson DeShazer, 15 to shoot. They can get the last shot here. You know they're going to look for Anya Galigbo, and there she is. Ooh, almost uh, threw that one away on the double team. Three-pointer, back iron, and rebound to McClendon. Here comes Vernicia, fires it up. Not close, but Rollins will go to the dressing room after being down three, after being down seven, really, in the last 30 seconds of the first quarter. Picked up four quick ones there, trailed by three, and have outscored Palm Beach Atlantic. 20 to 7 in the second quarter have a 10 point lead. The two big keys in the second quarter, Robert. Number one, Hannah Graham not getting anything going, sat the majority of that second quarter on the bench, and that led to Rollins being able to get everyone involved offensively, and they have to find a way to stop Ana Galibo. 10 points, six boards in the first half. Besides that, the rest of the sailfish, four of 21 in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, they're going to, they're going to, uh, Oh, good to see uh, Ken Gilbert in the house, Marie's dad. They're going to uh, have to do a little bit more down on the blocks, but she is a load down there, no question about it. And uh, you, I think you were absolutely right. They, Coach uh, Palacio was really angry that she fouled at the buzzer almost, uh, Hannah Grimm, but, but he's penalizing the team here, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, and when you have your best player on the bench, that puts pressure on everyone else to do things that are outside of their comfort zone, outside of what they're doing best. 
So, again, take out Anna Galibo. You really have not much going offensively in the first half. Does Grimm come back in the second half? And how will that long time sitting on the bench and being out of the flow of the game impact her and her teammates? Yeah, no question about it. We're going to see how long he's 